You guys want a picture? One more and I'll get out of your way. And as the name of the neighborhood suggests, finance became king. <clears throat> What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to New York City. Today, we're in NYC's very first neighborhood, the Financial District. It's a chilly early spring day, and in this film, we're gonna see some of Lower Manhattan's most famous landmarks and attractions, all while walking the streets of what was once known as New Amsterdam. So go ahead and finesse that like button, and let's explore FIDI. The Financial District is located in Lower Manhattan all the way at the Biggity Bottom. It's roughly bounded by West Street on the west, the East River on the east, the Battery on the south, and on the north, Brooklyn Bridge, City Hall Park, and Warren Street. However, the boundary between Fidei and Tribeca gets a little bit fuzzy. Nearby neighborhoods include Tribeca, Two Bridges, Civic Center, and Battery Park City. To get to the financial district, take the two or three train to Fulton, the four or five train to Wall Street, the J or Z train to Broad Street, the R or W train to Cortland, or the E train to World Trade Center. Yes, I did that all in one take. As one of the most important areas of New York, there are infinite ways to get to the financial district, but as always, I recommend walking, biking, or taking public transportation. There are also a ton of city bike stations in the neighborhood like this one, in front of the Alexander Hamilton US Custom House. Obviously a ton of coffee options in the financial district, but you gotta try 787 Coffee. Their beans are grown in Puerto Rico, not in Yauco, but in Maricao. They have a farm two cup direct experience. I got a rum infused cold brew. I've never had anything like this before. Absolutely incredible, out of this world. Life changing, I would even say. Rum infused into the coffee beans. I don't know how to do it. It's located right on Pearl Street, a couple doors down from Francis Tavern. You can also buy the beans in a bag, grind them up and brew it at home. Next time I'm gonna have to try the Coquito Latte though. Salud. What we refer to today as the Financial District was once beautiful lush green land inhabited by New York's indigenous peoples, which included the Lenape. I'm talking really lush, like think Disney level type forests. The word Manhattan comes directly from their language, but it's sometimes said to only have referred to the southern portion of the island. When the Dutch settled this area in 1624, they renamed it New Amsterdam, but despite their half-hearted efforts, the colony never really found much success. About 40 years later, the English invaded and said, give me that. They renamed it New York and developed even more of the island. We made a quick morning stop to Black Box Coffee. They have four locations throughout the city. I got myself an ice cold brew, no cream, no sugar. You know what it is and a regular boisson at that time of the morning. We've been filming a little bit, exploring the neighborhood, but it's time to get caffeine and a little bit of pastry. If you're at all curious like me, you're probably wondering if there are any Dutch remnants of New Amsterdam down in Lower Manhattan. Well, kinda. The Great Fire of 1835 destroyed what was left of Dutch architecture, at least above the ground. But you can see some of the foundations on public display right here at 85 Broad Street. Essentially, the most important lasting Dutch legacy is the section of the city bordered by Pearl Street, Broadway, and Wall Street. The original Dutch roads vary in terms of length, width, and angle. This was the medieval style of city planning versus the more contemporary grid pattern in place in so many other US cities, including Chicago. The streets were laid out according to existing Native American trails and natural forms in the geography. And when the British took over, they followed suit, laying streets in pretty much the same exact way. Bowling Green is New York City's oldest park. This is, according to legend, where Peter Minuit purchased the island of Manhattan from the indigenous people. In 1686, it was designated public space where they kind of used it as a dumping ground, a parade ground, all kinds of stuff. But in 1733, it was classified as a public park and it's been so ever since. This was once a fashionable residential district. You know, you're close to the water, you got a nice park, but now it's famously a lot of office buildings. The park was also partially destroyed during the construction of the IRT subway. In 1976, it was famously restored to its 18th century appearance. And that famous fence, that's 
also a New York City landmark. I know it's kind of weird for a fence to be landmark. Back in the day, there was a statue of King George, but the Patriots were getting kind of feisty. They were starting to vandalize that statue. So the British put up a fence. And just south of the park is the former site of Fort Amsterdam, today the home of the Alexander U.S. Custom House, which is the home to the National Museum of American Indian. I know it's a lot of information, but that's what you get in New York City, especially in this part of Manhattan. Everywhere you step, there's like a piece of history that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. For the first century or so, this was New York, and thus the financial district has played a key role, not just in the success of this city, but in that of the entire country. Beyond the grandeur, Lower Manhattan was the center of everyday life in New York. People lived, worked, and traded here. Most business owners and artisans lived in the very same building where they conducted business and artisaned. There's for sure one food that NYC just does incredibly well that I can't find anywhere else and that is the bagel. Of course, in NYC, you're gonna have classic bagel options everywhere. But if you are in the financial district, definitely hit up Leo's Bagels. They're actually relatively new, haven't been established in 2007, not too far from the Stone Street Historic District and this beautiful Queen Elizabeth II September 11th Park. I got the traditional, this is lox salmon, onion, cream cheese, capers, and tomatoes all on an everything bagel. As you can see, this looks nice and thick. Let's go. What can I say? This is just an incredible bagel and a phenomenal way to start your day down here in Phi Dai. At the end of the Revolutionary War, New York was the capital of the United States, but well into the 1800s, most of the development remained below City Hall. Things changed with the opening of the Erie Canal. All of a sudden, NYC's growth became exponential and moved up the island. Nevertheless, three important industries remained in this part of Manhattan, government, shipping, and finance. And as the name of the neighborhood suggests, finance became king. The National Museum of the American Indian is housed in the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House. Admission to this museum is completely free, but honestly, I would spend at least 20 bucks because it was legit. They have all sorts of artifacts from Native American tribes all across the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean. I saw my Taino peoples represented quite well. They also have lots of audiovisual materials. You could spend about an hour in here depending on how much you like to read or how many videos you like to watch. Right now, they have a temporary exhibit on decoding artist Oscar Howe, an artist whom I had never heard of paintings his sketches a nice documentary about his life that exhibit is here until september of 2022 upstairs they have the national archives of new york city so i'll be checking that one out as well i am sitting in the rotunda the gift shop is housed in the cashier's office i can't recommend this museum enough this was my first time here but i will definitely be back From the start of the Dutch settlement, Manhattan was a center of trade and commerce, and this continued through the British colonial era. Though it faced stiff competition from Philadelphia, NYC soon became the financial center of the United States after the Revolutionary War. The Bank of New York, founded in part by Alexander Hamilton in 1784, was the first bank to open up on Pearl Street. Eight years later, the organization that would become the New York Stock Exchange opened up on Wall Street, and it was followed by several more banks. Though the Great Fire of 1835 destroyed pretty much everything from here south, by that time, the name Wall Street was already synonymous with finance and so rebuilding was strong and swift. Bicillo was founded in 2013 by a husband and wife who came from Italy. And just like the founders, all the meats and cheeses come directly from Italy. The bread is baked fresh out in Brooklyn and delivered daily. I ordered the Parma Panini. It has prosciutto di Parma, mozzarella di bufala, arugula, and sun-dried tomatoes, all on freshly baked Brooklyn bread. I've already eaten half of this sandwich and it's absolutely amazing. Y'all know how much I love prosciutto and mozzarella. Now these aren't the paninis where they're heated up and all messed up. This is served cold. You get the cold cuts and the cheese. And let's dig in. Let's take a look at two of the oldest Wall Street survivors. The second Merchants Exchange, built in 1842, has been home to the New York Stock Exchange, U.S. Custom House, and Citibank of New York. The second story was modeled after the Roman Colosseum. The U.S. Custom House, today known as Federal Hall, was built on the site of an earlier Federal Hall where George Washington was inaugurated. It was modeled after the Parthenon in Athens. Some of the other great monuments to U.S. finance include the J.P. Morgan & Company building, the American Stock Exchange, and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. 
but time to get some fresh juice at Juice Generation. Here I got the Dr. Squeeze, it's orange juice, acerola cherry, and kiwi. And I also got a chlorophyll water. It's good for like detoxing and whatnot. This Juice Generation is right at the intersection of Maiden and Pearl Street. And just like they say in that movie, looks like I got the juice. The financial district saw its most growth from the 1890s to the 1920s as New York's first skyscrapers were built and trillions of dollars changed hands. But despite the name, it's not all about finance in the financial district. Trinity Church is one of the most famous religious buildings in the entire country. The current neo-Gothic structure was built from 1839 to 1846. This is also where one of the most famous streets in the entire world originates, Broadway. It was born as a Native American trail. The elevated acre is exactly what it sounds like. An elevated one acre park in the heart of the financial district in Manhattan, right up alongside the East River. And from here, you got great views of Brooklyn. It's a little bit hidden, but once you find it, it's totally worth it to be in this little oasis. While it's absolutely big facts that Lower Manhattan is most famous for being the center of US finance, if we explore the neighborhood a little bit, we can easily find remnants of old New York. The Stone Street Historic District is a great little time capsule from 1800s New York. It was originally named Hoogstraat, which the English translated to High Street. No, not that kind of high. They later renamed it York Street, but finally the Americans named it Stone Street because it was in fact the very first paved street in New York City. The fire of 1835 destroyed these blocks, but they were quickly rebuilt. That's why they look older than they actually are. We are in the South Seaport District and made a quick stop to Cafe Patoro. It's a Brazilian cafe that specializes in coffee and pastries. Their pastries are baked fresh on premises. I didn't get one today because I just ate lunch, but definitely next time it's on my list. I got myself an espresso so I can be nice and caffeinated while I view the historic ships that are docked right here in the South Seaport District. Salud. The South Seaport District is a throwback to the days when New York was less of a tourist attraction and more of a seaside trading center. You can view the historic ships, piers, and 19th century architecture in this great little part of the neighborhood with dining, shopping, art galleries, a great South Seaport museum, and amazing views of the Brooklyn Bridge and East River. And if you love Chicago and NYC guides just like this one, make sure you subscribe. The Francis Tavern block is yet another remnant of New York's 19th century heritage. Here you'll find a few Greek revival structures that recall this area's beginnings as a center of trade and commerce. It's of course named after the legendary Francis Tavern. Since 1719, Francis Tavern has been standing here right at the corner of Pearl and Broad Street. It has been a private residence, a hotel, a boarding room, and of course, a tavern. But we're in the Francis Tavern Museum. Admission is $7 for an adult. They have a recreation of a typical tavern room downstairs. That's the only place where you can't take photos. You can read all about George Washington, see paintings and busts. It's a great little museum, especially if you're at all interested in early US history. And this is where George Washington famously gave his farewell speech to his officers. The building itself like I said, has been standing since the 1700s. It was threatened quite a number of times. It caught on fire a few times. It was threatened with demolition as all the skyscrapers started encroaching on this block. But thankfully in the 1960s, it was made a New York City landmark. It's a cool little tavern. They have American food. They also have a whiskey bar. I ordered the Impossible Burger, which wasn't around when George Washington ate here, but I'm sure he would have approved. Really, really dope to be eating lunch in the same spot where George Washington gave his farewell address. The Impossible Burger really does taste like meat, and on this burger you have avocado, bib lettuce, pineapple chutney, and Oaxaca cheese. And it is a great alternative if you're not really feeling meat that day, or of course if you are vegan, you can order it without the cheese. Have you ever wondered about the black street signs in Lower Manhattan that differ from the rest of the city? These were installed as part of a multi-million dollar beautification program funded by the Alliance for Downtown New York. They were installed to beautify the area as well as help people navigate these historic and winding streets. On the street sign, you'll obviously find the name of the road, plus the address ranges, and a picture of a nearby landmark. Pretty helpful and beautiful.
Like we said earlier in the film, up until the mid to late 1800s, this was most of New York. But then at the turn of the century, what we know today as Midtown began to develop rapidly. It stole a lot of the shine from lower Manhattan and things got to a point where people believed downtown would be completely abandoned. But in the 1960s, two important skyscrapers were built that would help cement this area's legacy as the financial district, 140 Broadway and 1 Chase Manhattan Plaza, both designed by Chicago architectural firms Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. We can't talk about the financial district without visiting the story of the World Trade Center. The original Twin Towers and World Trade Center complex were completed in the 1970s, replacing Radio Row, a warehouse district specializing in all sorts of electronics. When they were completed, the towers were the tallest in the world, but in one of the most tragic events in U.S. history, History, they were destroyed on September 11, 2001. The rebuilding and recovery effort, in contrast, was one of the most heroic and uniting stories in U.S. history. A memorial and museum were set up, and in 2014, the new One World Trade Center was completed. It's time for yet another food stop in Manhattan's financial district. We are at Italy, the world famous Italian grocery slash collection of restaurants. They were started over in Milan. I am at their famous pizza and pasta restaurant. A lot of times I like to get that Neapolitan pizza, but today I was really feeling pasta, so I got the tagliatelle alla bolognese, smoothie tomato, house made ribbon shaped pasta, beef and pork ragu, plus pecorino romano cheese. Let's try some of this pasta before it gets too cold, right? It's absolutely excellent. You can taste the freshness of this pasta. Very al dente, which is how you're supposed to eat Italian pasta. This is located in the Westfield World Trade Center, so it would be a great spot to hit if you hit the One World Observatory, which we did a review on. It's a cloudy, rainy, chilly day in New York City, so pasta like this is definitely a good pick-me-up. I think I might get an espresso to cap it all off, too. One World Observatory is New York City's tallest observation deck at 1,268 feet and the only observatory in Lower Manhattan. It offers breathtaking views of the financial district. Be sure to check out our full review of this NYC attraction. Beginning in the 1990s, Lower Manhattan started returning to its roots. Nah, not to a Native American paradise, but to a residential neighborhood. And this evolution continues to this day. Historic office buildings become apartments and condos. Westfield World Trade Center is a humongous, partially underground shopping mall slash transit center. At over 350,000 square feet, it is the largest mall in NYC. The Oculus building was designed by Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava, who also designed the Milwaukee Art Museum. Liberty Park is yet another elevated park in the financial district. It offers great views of the World Trade Center and features Koenig's sphere as its centerpiece. There is no doubt that the Financial District is one of the greatest neighborhoods in NYC. On any given day, you can people watch and see thousands of locals, tourists, and finance bros walk the streets that were once quiet, English, and Dutch. Peace and blessings. <laughs>